Hi, everyone. Lenworth Gordon here. I'm a senior technical product manager at Amazon, working in the devices division. Um, my product right now is Amazon Sidewalk, and that is a low bandwidth community network that helps keep Echo and Ring products working better, and it can also serve to help find lost items or even pets. Um, before Amazon, I spent many years at Verizon working in the IoT space, the different IoT solutions, it's the Internet of Things. And um, before that, it was various uh, startup companies, medium and small size uh, and large enterprises. Um, I put uh, Gibby Road there, a startup I co-founded, um, because if you've ever started your own company um, where you're offering a product or service, you think people will love, you probably have a good idea of what it means to be a product manager. I'm often asked about my journey to product management. And it kind of starts like this from the top, have a computer science and engineering roots, started building solutions, you know, mainly database development and web front ends. Then I kind of got interested in the business side of things. So I got into professional services and consulting, and that's where I learned about other industries and how many different, how different companies do business. And when you're consulting, you also have an opportunity to upsell products and services. So I learned a little bit about sales and pricing and negotiation as well. And then, you know, I went from consulting and kind of all my skills in project and program management. And that became my sweet spot, sweet spot for a number of years. That's when I realized uh, the importance of process and tools. Uh, then I transitioned into product management. And you know, that was my particular journey, but there's many different ways to arrive at product management. Um, a lot of people from marketing backgrounds, earned PM, business backgrounds, engineering, design, customer service, people from all different backgrounds are in product management. So what is product management? Well, I like the way product school explains it. They say product management is a generalist role that sits at the intersection of engineering, design, and marketing. It's almost like being a translator between teams because you have to be thoughtful about your personality, preferred communication style, and motivations in order to adjust your communication style while keeping the same high level goal in mind. And note that PMs manage products, not people traditionally. Um, it's really an individual contributor role. If they do have direct reports, it's usually other PMs. Now part of PM, a big part of it is product strategy. Now this is kind of how you decide what to do next. And I like this chart by fellow ex Verizon colleague, Brian Joe, because it really explains what product market fit is. And it's about, you know, not only knowing what customers want. Um, in fact, PMs are an advocate for the customer, but the other two are just as important, you know, on the business side, will it make us money or move some other metric that the business cares about? You know, can the business support it? And then on the technical side, it's, can we build it? Is it even feasible? And that's where having some background in tech comes in handy as a PM, but not necessarily required. Now you understand what a PM is and you want to pursue a career, but you've never had a PM role. Hard skills and soft skills you could be developing now in your current position or even in college can prepare you to be a PM. So let me go through those. Now PMs aren't expected to code or build hardware, but tech skills lend credibility in communicating with engineering. And you'll be work working very closely with engineering to provide the requirements on what they're gonna build. It enables you to, to also speak on their behalf to other groups like sales and marketing. 
because you're, you're in that intersection. So what do you do? You take some intro level classes and things like operating systems or machine learning or artificial intelligence, network, system programming, database. Um, and then go build something, work on some side projects that can help understand with the various parts that go into building a product from the front end to the back end. Entering hackathons is a good way to get experience, but go build something. Second, I would actually rate this as one of the top PM skills that a PM must have. PM has to, has to adjust their writing style based on involved stakeholders, like writing requirement stocks, press releases, FAQs, value propositions, proposal, a whole bunch of other things. So how do you foster that skill of writing? Well, you know, you're in school, write for a school newspaper. Practice writing to different audiences. Uh, start blogging. Get some feedback. You know, having your peers review work and then iterating on it and refining it and is a process that you'll do as a PM quite often. You know, whenever I write press releases and FAQs, it will sometimes take up to two weeks or more of just going through the loop of writing, peer review, getting feedback, updating it, and repeating the process over and over until, you know, it's ready for approval. So writing is key. And design. Design isn't just about making things look pretty. It's about understanding how the customer is going to use the product and designing the product to provide a great user experience experience or UX for the customer. So start critiquing products. Ask yourself questions like, you know, why do you like these features? You know, who, who else would like this product? Why wouldn't they like it? You know, write, write reviews about a product. And then, you know, practice creating mock-ups using tools like Balsamic or Sketch. And again, participating in hackathons. It's a great way to hone these skills as well. Just as I said in the first hard skill, build something. Because in order to build something, it has to be designed first. And lastly, but not least, in the hard skills is domain knowledge. A PM is expected to be an expert in their product's domain. For example, when I was a PM for a learning management, learning management system, I had to learn everything about the education industry. When I was a PM for a healthcare product a while back, I had to ramp up my knowledge on medical equipment industry. Um, when I was a PM for a dog tracker, <laughs> I had to know anything going on in asset tracking industry. So how do you hone these skills? Well, you read, <laughs> you subscribe to product newsletters. You, um, I like to use Google news alerts on a search string and it allows me, it automatically sends me articles about anything that I'm interested in. Listen to industry podcasts. So read, read, read. So that's the hard skills. Now let's get into the soft skills a little harder to quantify, more like personality traits, attitudes, behavior, but, but um, they're not as easy to quantify, but they're just as important and sometimes even more important than the hard skills. PMs are constantly trying to sell people on their vision. They need to resolve conflicts without creating feelings of hostility. PMs don't usually have anyone reporting to them but they have to lead teams as many as 30 or more people. So how do you hone these skills? Well, you take courses that involve group projects and then you get to hone these conflict resolution skills during the projects. And then you have to use some persuasion, persuasion skills to create alignment with the group and read some books on persuasion, like never split the difference is a popular one. Um, another one is influence, the psychology of persuasion. Another good one is how to win friends and influence people. 
And since you'll be leading cross-functional teams, persuasion and influence is important. The PMs have to align the team around a timeline to keep the team members motivated all the way to the end. So how do you develop these leadership skills? Well, volunteer for leadership roles in a club, you know, help organize a group on large project, pro, uh, projects, even if it's an event. Um, and again, project-based classes. What do you do when a team member isn't putting in that much effort? You know, you'll learn things like leading without authority, and you'll get to apply what you learned about conflict resolution. Presenting. PMs are constantly presenting. After using those hard skills of writing those documents, many times you'll need to present them to the cross-functional teams. So um, it's good to read information and get training on how to give effective presentations. But you know, the best way to get good at presenting is practice. Practice, practice, practice. So just volunteer to present on a topic you're familiar with and do that as much as possible. Negotiating. Now, negotiating happens all the time, whether you're deciding on where to eat dinner or discussing a salary. The primary job description for a PM is cross-functional communication. You need to identify your BANTA when you're going into negotiation. And BANTA, that's an acronym for best alternative to the negotiated argument. Meaning what you'll do if negotiations fail and what the other party will do. Be sure to have your BANTA figured out before even arriving at the bargaining table. A lot of times PMs will be competing for resources to get the product delivered. You have to negotiate your product privatization or you know, negotiate for team members to spend time on your deliverables. So again, get good at asking the right questions. Um, going back to the persuasion, never split the difference. That book is also good for negotiating as well. How do you practice negotiation? Go to a flea market, <laughs> negotiate prices for things. That'll teach you a lot about negotiation. Uh, you know, settle disputes between your friends or family members. Get comfortable with uh, finding the root uh, of the issue and finding each party's point of view and understanding that, you know, listening more than talking so that what you say will be more effective. So after you've honed these skills, these hard skills and soft skills, and you're ready to update your resume, then, you know, these are just six steps that I suggest considering when applying to a company. So number one, the culture, get to know them. Uh, how are decisions made there? Where there's some successful products, where they're not successful products. What is the company culture? All that information is online. So you dig deep. Number two, for many, many jobs are considering remote roles these days. You know, this might be something to consider for the long run. If you're looking at an internship, you know, consider if you'll want to spend the summer there or perhaps your whole career there. So consider the location. Number three, don't think that you, you know, can't do to this or that. The reality is if you're passionate, you're curious, you're action oriented and comfortable with constant change, then a lot of companies will want to hear from you. Number four, your courses and work experience are important, but so are your passions and your pastimes. So, you know, what do you do outside of classes? What jobs and why? Consider that. Uh, number five, um, for example, one of Amazon's leadership principles is learn and be curious. So bring this into your application process and ask good questions. 
And then when number six, when you get asked, you know, why are you going to work here? <laughs> be prepared to answer that question. You know, it sounds like common sense, but you'd be surprised how many people aren't ready to answer that. So hopefully you've enjoyed this session about fostering your PM skills. But just remember, above all, good preparation is the key to maximizing success. Thank you.